reason why the 4C system could work is really because of this little, <laughs> this little guy. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Shifting Lanes. My name is Hanson. Thank you so much for tuning in. And in today's video, we're going to be dissecting the Volvo V70R's 4C suspension. So before we get down to the nitty gritty of dissecting the 4C suspension, first let me do a public service announcement. If you came to this channel because you got a notification on your phone, thank you so much for subscribing to this channel and also hitting that notification bell. If you haven't hit that bell yet, make sure you do that right now so you can get notified anytime we make a new video on our project cars or on the cars that we review on a regular basis. Also, if you got here because it was a suggested video or you were just searching for something weird, make sure you subscribe right now. We've got a bunch of stuff going on in this channel. We review cars. <laughs> Everything's it's turned just up. a little bit more intense. It's just a little bit more just Mm, and just running through <laughs> like like hit you in the face, yeah. but it's not it. It's like it's the, come 90 and then you meet the 10. I just listened to this instrument. Oh my god. We got 230 horsepower going right to the rear wheels. We got a ridiculously heavy clutch, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And we also have a couple of different project cars, starting first with the Volvo V70R Team Dad Wagon. And also we've got a BMW E46 M3 that Chad drives and very recently we picked up probably the most famous on the internet anyway Aston Martin V8 Vantage. So check out the channel and check out those videos so you can stay up to date with all our various project cars and also the press cars that we review on a regular basis. So now that the public service announcement is over let's get back to the reason why you're watching this video to take this thing apart. Okay, so why do we have the suspension? Well, we bought the Volvo V70R back in August of last year, and we bought it for very cheap, and check out the video linked above so you can see how much we actually got it for. And the reason why it was so cheap was because it had a lot of things wrong with it. One of the things that's wrong with it was the suspension. It was busted. The front left suspension was bad, and also the accelerometer that's attached to the suspension also went bad. Basically it was off of the mount and it was just dragging on the road. So because of that, the 4C's feature of being able to set different modes like comfort, sport, and advance, that feature was not available. So that was a big bummer and it was our goal to basically revive the 4C suspension by replacing it. And when we replaced it, we kept the old stuff so I could take it apart. One of the symptoms of the broken 4C system was that it was also stuck on sport mode. And based off of the information that I'm going to share with you today, there's a reason why it was stuck in sport mode the entire time. Okay, so here we've got the 4C suspension. This is the one that goes in the rear, and this is the one that goes in the front. This is where it gets mounted to the suspension arms, and up here is where it's mounted to the, to the strut tower. And here's where the spring sits. Uh, the difference between the front and rear shock uh, mechanically is very similar. So we're only going to take apart the one for the rear. So again, this is mounted by the suspension arms and this is mounted up to the shock tower. And what's different about this compared to other suspension tubes or suspension struts is the additional of this uh, tube that's welded to the side here. So that's the brains behind the 4C suspension. And to expedite things through the magic of editing, we've got it all blown apart. So first let's start off with the major components. Already you can see that this is a twin tube design. Twin tube meaning that there's two tubes. Here's the structural tube on the outside and here you can see the uh, the, weld, uh, the tube that's welded perpendicularly to the, uh, the main axis. Um, and then you have the inner tube. And here you can see an orifice. That's how you're able to change the uh, damping settings from soft to firm. And here you have the piston. It's actually in this orientation. It moves up and down this way. This piston pushes on the hydraulic fluid and it goes through the orifice down here, orifice down here, and also here, and that's how you get uh, your damping. Uh, and then of course you also have all the other stuff which I had to kind of destroy. 
Uh, one interesting note, this, um, the joints at the bottom, this part is magnetic. When you're working with steel, rubbing on other components, uh, it produces a fine dust, so you kind of want to trap all that junk somewhere. And uh, there's just a magnet down here which traps all of the uh, iron filings. So I thought that was kind of interesting and just kind of found that out right now. Um, aside from that, we also have the brains of the 4C suspension. This is a solenoid and we can go into more detail uh, about that in a little bit. Again, this wasn't really cut in a nice way. I had to use an angle grinder for all of this. It wasn't very scientific or clean, but uh, you get the idea of how it works. Uh, again, this is the inner tube and uh, in the 4C suspension setting, you have comfort, sport, and advanced. When you have it in the comfort setting, you have this piston here that kind of goes in and out of this orifice. So when it moves into the orifice, it changes the diameter of this outlet to a smaller diameter. So therefore you have a firmer suspension. I believe that in the comfort setting, this is in the open position, or what I like to call the on position. When it's in sport or advanced mode, it's either in the closed position or it is actively being moved in and out of the orifice. So again, that changes the opening from this diameter to a smaller diameter. Pretend you're breathing through a straw. It's harder to breathe through one straw than it is to breathe through two straws. And here you're breathing through one straw and in this setting, you're breathing through two straws. So that's essentially how the 4C system works. We have a solenoid valve that moves this piston from what I like to call the on position, and this is the off position. Like I mentioned earlier, the broken suspension was stuck in sport mode. It was in this position constantly. It couldn't, it couldn't modify the position of this piston so that there was only one damping setting and it was this one. It was stuck in that position because that's the natural off state. If the solenoid was working, you could take it to the on state and that essentially pulls this piston out and you could have a bigger opening. If you stop watching the video right now, you'll get an understanding as to how the 4C system works. Essentially, this goes in and it goes out. But if you want to understand more as to how it really works, uh, then you kind of have to dig deeper into how a solenoid valve works. This is the device that sits perpendicular to the movement of the, of the, of the shock. So let's set all of that stuff aside and really take a look at how a solenoid works. Essentially a solenoid takes electrical energy and turns it into linear motion. So when you send electricity through this coil here, you're basically moving this armature from this state to that state. There's other things going on in here that redirects hydraulic fluid to give you that mechanical advantage so that this thing can go into the, into the tube. So if I take this apart gingerly, uh, there's so many different things in here and The reason why the 4C system could work is really because of this little, <laughs> this little guy. So you've got the armature from the solenoid that moves from left to right. And if you could see here, that essentially pushes that little piston left and right also. So this little plunger or piston presses up against this other piece and essentially this is a plug. So with this plug, this protrusion kind of sticks into this little opening in here. This little guy kind of goes in and out just ever so slightly. And this, all of that solenoid, all of that movement is really to move this guy just that little bit of distance. And if you could see all of this opening, there's a very small channel here to allow hydraulic fluid 
to go through this, and that's the reason why there's these holes around the axis of this little plunger. And hydraulic fluid can flow through here and through the opening that's in the center right there. So it's hard to see, but as I'm pressing on the back of the plunger, you can see that the plug goes in and out of the hole. So when it's plugged up or is in this position, so this is unplugged, or I believe that this is the sport setting, this is comfort setting. Sport setting, comfort setting. So when it's in the sport setting, essentially what that does is it allows oil to come through to this little cavity. It pushes this piston away from that opening and it pushes on this guy so that it could enter this orifice. Alternatively, if you go into comfort mode, the solenoid will be activated and it will push on this plug. So when the plug is pushed, the front side no longer has hydraulic pressure so that this piston is to be sucked into the back side of, of, this, uh, of this little component. What happens is when this gets pushed back, again, I cannot put this in here because the fitment is very tight. So imagine that this is sport or advanced. When it is in the comfort setting, it gets pushed back to this position because the, the pressure on this face is greater than the pressure, the oil pressure back here. So when it gets pushed back, the hydraulic pressure on the front side of the piston is greater than the back so that it's going to want to come out of this little tube. Using hydraulic fluid and the differences in you know, the openings, you're, you're able to change the pressure on the back side and the front side. That's essentially what the 4C suspension does, is that it moves this little guy left to right so that it goes into that orifice and changes the diameter from that opening to this opening. All right, so I'm gonna to have to get the pen and paper out for this thing because it takes a little bit to explain how the 4C system is awesome when it comes to vehicle dynamics. So in conjunction with the variable damping setting of the suspension, you also have those three accelerometers around the car. So. Why do you have three accelerometers? That's because three points define a plane. So if you just have one point, you can only tell whether that's moving in one direction. If you have two points, then you could kind of tell which way it's moving in the up and sideways direction. But when you have three points, kind of like in the Volvo 4C system, that defines the plane. So here are your two front accelerometers this point you could figure out all six degrees of freedom not just the up and down or the left and right or the front and back but also you get to know the the roll of the car the pitch of the car and also the yaw of the car so you get to know all six degrees of freedom and you understand just what the vehicle is doing so when you're when you're accelerating real fast the car is trying to change the pitch and at that point what you could do is you could stiffen up the back um, corners of the suspension while the front suspension uh, stays softer. So when the vehicle is accelerating you could firm up the rear suspension so that it makes it harder for the car to pitch more to the rear. Alternatively if you are trying to brake real hard you could stiffen up the front suspension so that the car does not pitch forward as much. And also when you're going through the track, you could independently change the stiffness on all four corners. So that's what's so impressive about the 4C system is that it allows you to change the damping on all four corners uh, just by sending a little bit of electrical energy to the armature here 
and therefore you could change the damping that way. So there you have it. That's what the 4C suspension system looks like when it's dissected. I hope you learned something new. If you haven't already, like I mentioned earlier, please subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button down below and also check us out on all of our other social media channels. With that said, I want to thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you next time.